So Steffi, you simply the best. Thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to meet some friends. Some are really simply friends, some are promoter. Uh, some are being client that becomes great friends. And so this is a particular meeting for me because since Corona, I haven't been able to have a, a present uh, activities. So it's in an, an, a double sense of the world, a great moment for myself. Um, I don't know if you can see my, so what is circular to me? So what is the architecture for the future? <laughs> Those are big words. Uh, I'd like to tell you something. You see this big picture, and now you see it. Um, it's not to show you that I'm, I'm a great uh, driver. I don't know. But this picture has been taken in uh, a village uh, in Burkina Faso in February uh, by a friend of mine, Ivan. Um, what you can see there in the world where I started my career, we also love cars. Um, but what is missing is like the link how you keep pushing it. So many, many of that kind of cars end up, you know, being like this. Look at the wheels, and you see that this car has been standing for more than 60 years in the same place. So what I want to say, um, so whatever you invent here, even in remote place, it will have a resonance. Uh, so I use it to just start uh, my lecture this way, and now we have a car. Um, I would have used uh, a, a car of the organizer and sponsor of this event, but I couldn't find. But let's stay with one of the very first cars. Um, what, you have, what you have here is car has revolutionized our way of living. Uh, referring to the word before is a conference of mobility. Yes, and the place where I'm coming, we also love mobility. And here, look at how the development went. The car went so far that now we have some picture stronger, faster, most expensive. And suddenly, a change. We have to be aware about environment. Now, we start to fight to find a way how we make the cars fit to our environment. You know, our changing um, world, you know, the conflict because of resources. So I love this picture very much. And so, let me say, if the development went good, my people will also benefit. You know, those people you see in the picture, they can't wait to earn their first money and to get a car. This is reality. Maybe my world of circular, circularity is connected to that. The fact that we are one world. And what happened here? So if the economy breathed wrong, a couple of months later, it will reach the entire world. Um, but often what we don't see, if there is a fresh wind there, we don't see it. Maybe we don't have the capacity to look at for, of a network that we don't have. So let me talk about then architecture, because this number of people wants to have architecture, want to have housing, schools, infrastructure. So I will show you very quick, not just project in Burkina Faso, but just simply what I'm doing. So, I am a maker. I'm trying to create, to do something. So I'm delivering service to humanity. And here, one project. It is in Burkina Faso, Kudugu, close to Ouagadougou, the capital city of Burkina Faso. So for you to see, this is the site. And then for this project, we started nearly six years ago. And then the project keep growing. And we created now a campus, and I will just talk about one aspect of the project. So this client is a couple from Munich that said, you know, we have a good network, and then we want to promote education in your country. Would you accept to be our designer? Of course, I'm architect, and I love challenges. So it has to be sustainable. We cannot design and build at one time, but we want you to create a, a house and a, a high school, we did it. And later the family came and said, you know, Francis, we went to the US and we discovered MIT. We want you to design Burkina Institute of Technology. Guys, I love that. If you heard this from a client. But certainly the client said, we want you to start like steep job, like a little classroom. I say, hey, a little classroom in the middle of the desert, a little classroom. 
how much energy, how much effort you will put to really build that. It's not sustainable. So after a long dialogue, they told me about their financial um, um, potential, and then I went back to really redesign. And so I started to create the cluster. If they have resources, we can add a new project into it, like a classroom, a conference room. However, this is the project. So ventilation. I don't want to talk about sustainability because what I'm doing is that everyone calling sustainability. So with this saying, I'm using word of Norman Foster, Lord Norman Foster, who was saying, you know, Francis, this is it. Everyone is talking about it and you're doing it. So allowed me to also use these big names to put the weight in that what I'm trying to tell you. So here again, this is what it has to be. But I wanted to use wood. Burkina Faso is a landlocked country. We have no water. Wood is coming from Ghana, and there is the way you transport them to the site. Okay, going this way is not okay. But there is an alternative. This is eucalyptus wood. It's a local um, available kind of wood. The miracle here is try to cut them on the lower part, it, and then it will grow again. Many, many branches that you can cut and use. But my people use them, you know, just to fire or for temporary shelter. Okay, let's see what I can do with it. The next step, harvest them, create a job around the construction site, get women beef involved in the construction business, which is in every country very different, and then giving them a chance to participate. Sometimes you go on, on the site and you see women sending the wood. It's, much, it's, it's spiritual. They're part of a making. So the idea is if the building break, like the car we have seen before, someone will be able to fix it. And this is part of my work. Even the women, a part of this business. And so very quick, that is the campus. So using locally available material, clay, you add with cement to create walls and create a structure like this where people can stay and enjoy education. Here, a sort of uh, provocation. No, a sort of adaptation. Le Corbusier called this kind of, uh, of uh, sh shadow uh, bris soleil. Okay, this is the bris soleil à la Francis Carré. So here, the student can stay, they can pray. No matter what you do, you're creating space for people to take ownership of it. That's what I'm doing. So they will um, read. So you have um, um, opening, using the leftover from the casting material to create windows. And so this is how we work and trying to create structure that fit to the country, to the need of the people, and just create a place to stay and to hang on. So, and this project is so complex. So we have a lot of elements. So here, trees are a big issue. There is no shadow. Planting tree is also a big issue because my people used to live with nature. So why should I plant? But guys, that is a problem, population growth. So you have to change the paradigm, you know? And you have to tell them how we need to integrate a, a, planning, a planting issue with it. Look at what I'm doing. I'm digging a big hole. My people will come and say how stupid he is. We know he can build uh, houses, but why he's planting a tree in a place where a tree will never grow? But you keep doing it because you had access to information, to education. And so you get people looking to you, criticizing you, but you keep working. And then you put the seed on the soil and you put a pot, an element that is known in the culture. And then you put water and you create a campus growing, creating trees, create, trees will create a shadow. You're creating a vegetable garden. These people will not wait for food donation from somehow to come there. They will grow their vegetable and then they will sit while the trees are going. You see how the youth is using this structure. So it is not donated, it grows in front of the people. And so here the next one. Let me say, it's a big word, but I'm trying to put light in the place where there is a lot of talent. 
but a lot of darkness because of a lack of education. So I'm trying to put light through my architecture. So here another project, um, Startup Lions. This project is in, the, in Kenya. I met um, a, a visionary personality uh, during a conference, and he just asked me if I will agree to help him create the project. And I, like, I love this, this uh, uh, the picture, empowering the youth to transform uh, the life of millions. I love that. And this is our mission. So he said, Francis, but it's not a beautiful place. It is in the middle of nowhere in Turkana, in Kenya, the place where no one knows. My vision is to get young people inside a building, give them a computer, and then, and then teach them digital technology and allow them to stay in this middle of nowhere and design and earn money. Wow, what a vision. Joseph Boyce will say, whoa, why I didn't know about something like this? And he did it, and we start to work. So a termite in the place. Uh, we saw that I wanted to learn from it because this building is in the middle of nowhere. There is no electricity that you can cool the buildings. And what we did to learn from the termite and to create a structure that you can see, very quick. Steffi, I didn't have time to go through, that's why I'm rushing. So this is what we have created in a structure that already serving many, many young people. And the client was able with his partners and friends around the world to grab young people from refugee camp and give them a laptop. And believe me, these young people are sitting in the middle of nowhere in Kenya and earning money dealing with clients in the US and then I hope this number will grow. So another project, Asylum, now not in Africa. So if we consider the entire world, there is still a potential of innovating and then to innovate. Here, I met uh, Peter and, and Kathy, two artist lover, two promoter of art, music and whatever, and they asked me if I can design a pavilion for their guests in their huge uh, museum, open air museum. I agreed. So I saw the place. I was thinking about sunset. I was thinking about romantic. I was thinking how after a hiking, a couple con could go and sit and watch a creek. In my sketches, I put river. It was the missing word in English, but don't worry. What I wanted to do is to create a place where people can meet, relax, and enjoy nighter. There was a, a bridge, I call it a romantic bridge, but the material. Montana is so rich, there is a lot of wood that I don't have in Burkina. But they told me, oh, we use this for fire, we use this for paper, and I said, okay, I will use it for our pavilion. And that is how it came. In Montana is very hard, you have to work um, intelligently. We have to we have winter and summer. And so very quick, uh, show you what even animal love it to be part of the process here. This is a dog of the builder, and this is the structure. So the idea is no matter when it's possible, so you could replace the structure. I'll go very quick. And so some friends will tell me, talk about engineering inside the, your project. We will have time in the lect lecture room when you want. But this is the project in the landscape in summer, but also in winter, it's become part of the landscape. And me as an architect coming from Burkina Faso, if you go there, you see this picture, and you really see how it really works, and you see a cowboy coming to tell you, I have a bunch of that kind of wood. I didn't know that we could do something like that with this. I'm sorry to imitating him. I was impressed, I was impressed that I can come from far and be able to use resources that people own to create something that I love, you know. And so to see Kathy and Peter and some of our friends sitting and enjoying a concert in Montana, in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's giving you a lot of confidence. So you can contribute to make our world better. So very quick, another project. Hans, if you're here, I'm doing this for you. Serpentine. I got a call, I got a call, and my office told me, oh, those from Serpentine are looking for you. So you should make a proposal for a pavilion. It should relate to community, whatever. Okay, guys, 
I didn't take it seriously. I was thinking I'm not at the reach of serpentine. But then I traveled to Burkina. My assistant called me saying, oh, Francis, it's very, ser Francis, it's very serious. Hans really wants you to make a proposal. I said, Hans, it's true? Okay, let's do it. So I start to explore how community gather in my country and then come with an idea to say even a richer nation like England cannot afford to waste energy. Let put the pavilion relating to the element, to how you can collect water, and how you can create a canopy to get the community gutter. So, and so is it. So, at many, many sketches, I was surprised. Hans loved it. I said, okay, of course, he's an artist. So, they always has a vision. They always have a, a six, ten step be, before us. So, I did it. Referring to the, to the bricks work at the Serpentine uh, galleries, and then, of course, I'm coming from Burkina, from Africa. I love our place. It's full of inspiration. So what we did is just to learn from it. But every time, if you have an idea, you have to prove to the client that you are able to do it, to build it, to make it make. So we do a lot of mock-up, like you can see here. And then at the end is to be able to use the resources you're getting from a client in a very uh, best way, you know? So here. Serpentine again, very difficult, guys, I'm warning you. Schedule is very tight, expectation is very high. So, but Serpentine Galleries is very supportive. We was able to make it very quick. It is like building in Gando almost. But here, we have machine and a lot of support. And so is the pavilion. Um, everything, everything with natural help and wood from Europe, you know, and I love this slide. But here, guys, for this little slide, we spent so much time you cannot imagine. But being an architect, it helped me. I use it later to, to design a parliament house in Burkina Faso. This little slide, is a slide that you can see. So, okay, very quick, my last project. I hope I will make it in less than one minute. Uh, Leo, Dr. Housing. But it is about housing. And again, because I started with Burkina Faso, I want to end with Burkina. Again, Leo. Um, I sit a little town at the border to Ghana. And so the idea was to create housing for a clinic that I built a couple of years ago. And what I was doing, this is the project you can see. I went back to see the traditional housing and to see the need of people. People are using little boxes that is replacing the circular uh, structure. So because it's modern, they're topping it with metal shit. It is hot inside, really. And my idea is to improve it. People may come to get fixed by a doctor, and the way they will learn a new way to build. And so we went to work again, and that's what we have created. Very simple, at the size and then the affordability for my people, and hoping they will learn it, and to really to grow. And that is what. And they even have a garden, a vegetable garden, you know? If you talk about housing in Africa, you talk about compound, and then the way of to be free to reconnect things. And so all of these being built using clay, locally available, even from the extraction sometime. And so the building simple. And so let me finish with this project that uh, um, um, Steffi was referring it. Because she already said it, me coming from a place like this, and then wanted to study architecture, and in, in Germany, I came with a scholarship, and I was supposed to be trained in carpentry. But I said, I want to be an architect, okay? They said, okay, you cannot be an architect because you need a abitur, high school degree. I said, okay, I want to get it, but you have to study six years. And how will you live? Oh, I can't work. I have my two hands. I will earn my money to do. They didn't believe. But they hesitated, they gave me a chance. I did my high school degree in an evening school in Berlin, and I was able afterward to study and create the structure that Steffi was referring to. Now, as you know, you can create great things, but it is about the speed, and we all are under pressure, you know. This school and architecture needs time and a lot of resources. It is not Facebook, it is not Google, you know, it is not Netflix, you just click. You need to collect a lot of resources. You need a long breath, and you need to love what you're doing to keep it spread, becoming one of the 25 
most uh, important building uh, after Second World War. The building is 20 years old. I'm still under, I'm still a young architect. I'm hoping that I will keep showing this example to inspire a lot of young people in the world. Maybe one day you will not see one school, but you will see many, many schools that even uh, the number exceed the number of electric cars that are existing. Thank you so much, Steffi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Can you, can you see why I love Thank so you. much doing DLD? Having contact with these wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Francis, you. for your great presentation. Yes. I think it inspired all of us, together with the young entrepreneurs before you. Yes, yes. So I, this is DLD. Thank you, you so thank much. Thank you for your friendship. DLD is the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.